Good evening and welcome to you all to this service of evening prayer on Thursday the 14th of January when we continue this journey together through the Epiphany season. I don't think any of us quite expected snow today but uh, fortunately it all seems to have gone except for looking very pretty up on the hills here although we know that in some parts of the country they've had quite a deluge and it's causing a lot of problems and so we remember those places this evening. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your glory is proclaimed in all the world. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. You gave your Christ as a light to the nations, and through the anointing of the Spirit, you established us as a royal priesthood. As you call us into your marvellous light, May our lives bear witness to your truth, and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 61. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. Hear my crying, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you with fainting heart. O set me on the rock that is higher than I, for you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent for ever, and take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O God, will hear my vows, and you will grant the request of those who fear your name. You will add length of days to the life of the king, that his years may endure throughout all generations. May he sit enthroned before God for ever. May steadfast love and truth watch over him. So will I always sing praise to your name and day by day fulfil my vows. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. Risen Christ, as you knew the discipline of suffering and the victory that brings us salvation, so grant us your presence in our weakness and a place in your unending kingdom, now and for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So this evening we continue our readings from the book of Genesis, this evening reading chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made, he said to the woman, Did God say, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was be, to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God, walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid himself from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. 
Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put an enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your pangs in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Yet your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. And to the man, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all who live. And the Lord God made garments of skins for the man and his wife and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, and now he might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live for ever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man, and at the east of the garden of Eden he placed the cherubim and a sword flaming and turning to guard the way to the tree of life. Here ends our first reading. A song of praise. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. Our second reading is taken from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But made, they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them and killed them. The king was enraged and, and he sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. The slaves went out into the streets and gathered all, all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? and he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Here ends our second reading. The Magnificat. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights, the anointed one on whom my spirit rests. 
My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights, the anointed one on whom my spirit rests. So let us pray. So as we hear these familiar words of scripture, we pray for an interpretation of them. We pray that we may find comfort in the familiarity of the words that we hear from the Bible. But we pray that we may not use scripture to hurt others, to do others down, to put others down, and as an excuse for behaviour. We pray that we may use the words to build people up, to join them together, and to know that Jesus is the foundation of our lives, the one who ushers in the kingdom of heaven, so that we may experience it now and in the life still to come. We pray for our world. We pray especially for those areas suffering from this global pandemic, where new variants are being found and spread very quickly. We pray, Lord, for those who are suffering from the virus, for those who find themselves in hospital, for those unwell at home and being cared for there. We give thanks for all those who have been involved in the scientific work and research into this virus so that we may understand more about it and that we would be better equipped to fight it. We pray for those who've worked on the vaccinations and from our prayer intention today we pray especially for those responsible for the rollout of the vaccination programme. We pray for those receiving the vaccine, especially any who are nervous or afraid. And we pray for those administering it and those responsible for such a massive logistical operation, not only in our own country, but across our world today. We continue to pray, Lord, for those areas of our world where warfare and conflict reign, that your peace would be poured out and people would come to know that peace in their lives and in their land. We pray also for a fairer sharing of the world's resources, so all may have food to eat, clean water to drink, shelter over their heads and access to medicine and education. We pray for those who have set out on dangerous journeys to try to find a better life for them and for their families, but who find themselves refugees, strangers in a strange land. Lord, we pray for charities and for aid workers and for peacekeepers who still continue their work even in the difficulties that our world faces at this time. Closer to home, we pray for our schools, for our young people, for those still attending places of education and those who are learning at home with the challenges and the opportunities that that brings. We pray for those who are teaching, both in person and online, and for those who have the responsibility of keeping our young people safe at this time. We pray for our key workers, for those who go out to work and those who work from home. We pray for those who are furloughed, 
those who feel frustrated at being unable to work, those who are worrying about how they might make ends meet, those who need extra help, and for those who've lost their employment. We pray for our local food banks and food larders, places where help can be accessed, that generosity may be shown in giving items to them, but also in the giving out of all that they have. We continue to pray most especially at this time for our health service, for our local hospitals across the country facing such overwhelming problems as more reports are given out today about waiting lists and those who have had to wait a long time for operations, treatment and care. We pray, Lord, to, for you to be with those who work within the health service, that they are not discouraged and disheartened when they read these reports, but know that they are working to the best of their ability in trying to care for those people who are most ill at this time. We pray for those who work in intensive care units, for those who are on the front line. We pray for those who work behind the scenes and especially for our hospital chaplains, providing that pastoral care and support that is so desperately needed. As we pray for our hospitals, so too we pray for our hospices, for those who live and work in care homes and sheltered accommodation, for those who work out in the community, providing support and help for people in their homes. We pray for our GP surgeries, for health centres and pharmacies, and for the work that they do and the medical advice that they give. Lord, when people feel overwhelmed, we pray that they would be strengthened by the prayers we make this evening. Lord, we pray for those who are unwell, for those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, those who are suffering from COVID-19 and those who are unwell. We pray and bring to you, Lord, Lisa, David, Morris, Margaret, Mary, Jeff, Alan, Chris, John, Jim, Elaine, Susan, Kath and her family, Sister Catherine, Christine, Margaret, baby Thomas and his family, Gary, Marion, Douglas, Brian, Steve, Joanna, Ian and Helen, Martin, Jane and Reese, Michelle and Sydney. Lord, we pray for them and those that we name within the silence of our hearts who need that, whole, that healing and wholeness. And so we pray for those who have died. We pray for those who've died this past day, for those who've died recently and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, we pray that you would be with all those who mourn, who carry that pain of bereavement that you would lift the burden that they feel, that you would surround them with your love, wipe away their tears and show them the hope of the resurrection. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Thank you for joining me for this service of evening prayer this evening. It's been lovely to have your company as always. Tomorrow we have our usual services at 9 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Um, I've swapped my day off this week, so I'm working tomorrow. So we will be having our live stream services. So I do hope that you have a good and peaceful evening, that you take care, stay safe, look after yourselves, and you remain, as always, in my prayers. Do take care.